More than 100 members of a white nationalist group called the Patriot Front held a disturbing rally in D.C. on Saturday in an effort to, they say, reclaim America. The group of men marched from the Lincoln Memorial to the Capitol just blocks from the White House. They obscured their faces with sunglasses and white masks and wore matching uniforms. Many held American flags while others held banners that read, reclaim America. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, Patriot Front broke off from the other white nationalist group called Vanguard America after a member of that group used his car to kill Heather Heyer at the deadly Unite the Right rally uh, uh, protest in Charlottesville in 2017. According to the Anti-Defamation League, members of Patriot Front believe their ancestors conquered America and handed it down to them. The leaders of the group said they marched on Saturday to show their strength and ability to organize. But at the end of the rally, they reportedly struggled to reclaim their ride back home. The Daily Beast uh, wrote this. Members of the group had waited in, uh, in a, had wanted, waited in a one-way one roundabout to depart in one of the U-Haul uh, trucks that they had used to transport themselves to the rally, but the large rented moving van could not fit them all, so many of them were forced to wait in 45 degree darkness as the bulky orange vehicle made multiple trips over the course of nearly three hours. Joining me now to discuss is Professor of American Social, uh, Social Thought and Chair of the Department of Religious Studies at the University of Pennsylvania, Anthea Butler, and founder of One People's Project, Daryl Lamont Jenkins. So Anthea, I want to start with you. I mean, one thing is interesting about this group is that it's first of all how young they are. You could you just tell that just from the pictures, even though you could see their faces. There's this is a bunch of young people. They do a lot of their organizing activism on college campus. Actually, when the ADL looked at all the propaganda on co on college campuses, like the posters and stickers and all that stuff, they were the number two group doing that. I think a lot of times we think of white nationalists as old men from the rural parts of somewhere in the sticks and coming and, and raging against the cities. But these are not that. Like, what does this portend that these are young people focused on college campus and that kind of recruitment? I, I think it portends something very serious. And I think, Charles, you know, one of the things that I believe the press has missed, although people have started paying attention to Charlie Kirk and others who have been organizing on campuses with um, organizations that attack professors and do all this. What's interesting about Patriot Front is that they see themselves as this frontline group that can march in, go to the Lincoln Memorial, like be out of lockstep, because I don't think they look very organized to me. But to put up sense of intimidation. And I think that's what the most important thing about this is, is that the covering the face, covering your eyes with the sunglasses, wearing the flags, you know, this is indicative of all the kinds of KKK marches we saw that went in the 20s in Washington, D.C. and other places, the kinds of, you know, Luftwaffe marches through Germany, all of this kind of stuff, and things where you see KKK marching as well in the South in the 50s and 60s. So what I would say about this is this. You know, while everybody is sort of saying college campuses are hotbeds of liberalism and all of this other stuff, it's also hotbeds for recruitment for conservative groups. And that is what they have been doing in a lot of different ways for the last 10 to 15 years underneath the radar screen. And now what we can see are things like Patriot Front that are coming out into the open and asserting their white supremacist ideals and beliefs. Daryl, do you think that some of what's happening on college campuses is, is a backlash against white, uh, by white men against the idea that they were being constantly told to check their privilege, right? That they had a set of privileges that were above and beyond everybody else's and of all the people who needed to kind of s listen and absorb the pain of others, it was them. And because I, I, you know, I, I did a lot of speaking at college campuses. I kept picking that up. Like, there was just an energy around these men that was, you know, I didn't do this, and I am getting tired of being blamed for this. Do you believe that, Daryl, that, that some of this is, is an outgrowth of that? 
Yes, well, I do. As a be- oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go um, ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I would, okay. Uh, no, I would say that um, it's definitely that. I mean, I met Matthew Heimbach, who was a well-known neo-Nazi activist at Towson University, where he was, in fact, organizing. So we do see that element regularly on college campuses. We saw it in Michigan when a chapter of uh, the Young Americans for Freedom became listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a white supremacist organization. You know, I mean, Patriot Front, however, I mean, yes, they are young. And to be perfectly honest with you, this is basically the totality of Patriot Front. They put their stickers on lampposts and things. They have these little flash mob rallies every now and again. The last one was in Philadelphia and it didn't work out too well for them because people confronted them and they weren't even allowed to get into their box trucks because that's illegal to ride in the back. But we have to look at how um, the influence of right-wing organizations like the Leadership Institute and um, Turning Point USA try to um, basically recruit people on college campus to do these kinds of things. Not necessarily join white supremacist groups, but but engaging these kinds of campaigns against that which the right feels are threats to them. And then do you believe that the, the geography of hate groups is shifting? I was looking at their, the, you know, the, the map that is produced by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And it's very interesting, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, we associate, you know, I think our associations are dated around white supremacy, so people still associate the Klan with the South, and they still think the Klan is a big, scary thing. But there's just so few Klan chapters now, so few Klan members, but where the energy is, the people who get the headlines, those groups are not as prominent in the South. They're prominent kind of outside of the South, and they, and when you look at the leadership of those groups, a lot of those people never lived in the South. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can think about places like, you know, Oregon as a, you know, hotbed of white supremacists and people don't think about it like that. But I think to the point that was made about turning point and campus reform, what you have to understand is there's so much money behind this. This is a lot of money that is fueling these organizations. They're not grassroots organizations. They're not asking people for five and ten dollars. They're getting millions of dollars to be able to get in front of all of this and, you know, fund people and fund the kinds of programs that appear on college campuses. So that resentment that that you see that you might have felt when you were doing college campus tours before the lockdown was a way in which they have stoked this through social media, through organizing, through all other kinds of things. And so I think what we see is that it's not just a backlash to, I don't want to take a class about ethnicity. It's a class about, I feel like I'm being replaced and I don't want to have anybody replace us. So this is where this take back America kind of language comes from. And when you put that together, with the kinds of things that you know has happened when we were in the Trump era and afterwards with trying to steal the election on 1-6, what you have is a very potent stew as we come up to the anniversary of 1-6, where there are gonna be people who are gonna be you know, asserting themselves and still saying that the election has been stolen and at the same time wanting to organize and get ready for 2022. So, Darryl, you know, I, I always think back when I see these sorts of things about colleges and whatever to the young man who was uh, at Columbia and he was talking about, you know, white men invented the modern world and, you know, I love white men and whatever. And I'm not suggesting he's part of any sort of uh, hate group or white supremacist group, but, but that sentiment growing on college campuses, which is that there, you know, there's a, a version of history in which white men dominate and control that that has an intellectual audience and cheer squad. And, you know, I, I wonder whether you think how that relates to politics. Is politics, of our, our current politics feeding that, or is that thing kind of helping to fan the flames of our current politics? Well, <laughs> I find it interesting that when this little rally happened, the first thing that you saw the right do on social media 
was not to denounce the group and say that they don't they do not represent their values but to go into damage control and do their usual stunts saying they never heard of the group they are possibly feds or antifa or the media created them when that happens i look at it as them telling on themselves because they realize that it is their work it is their things that they have been doing over the past several decades that led to this. I mentioned Matthew Heinbach a um, couple of minutes ago. He was representing a group called Youth for Western Civilization. Now that group was organized at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference. And a lot of what that group did is what we're fighting now, is what you see when you see those knuckleheads marching in the street last weekend. So yeah, they do have a lot of um, culpability in all of this. We have to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Anthea Butler and Daryl Lamont Jenkins, thank you very much, guys, as always. I really appreciate it.